Good morning, folks. This is Bowtie Dave for Bowtie Life. Out here on a partially cloudy day in the panhandle of Florida, the heart of Destin, on the Emerald Coast. It is Saturday, June 11th, in the morning. And today I'm going to embark on a new project. Uh, the the uh, property has been coming along really nicely. I'm very pleased with it. Oh, I'm also using my uh, E-Meet Luna Bluetooth sound device, so maybe we'll have some good sound this time. I'm working on better uh, production, and hopefully it'll show a little bit this time around. But uh, right here on the foreground, you're going to notice my uh, Jerusalem artichokes are looking fantastic. The original ones that I planted are approaching three feet tall. I don't know if you can see the ones that we planted in the tour down there, but they're about a foot tall. We got another tour coming up for June here in uh, just not very long. Hopefully next weekend we'll begin our June video tours of the garden and we'll be starting here in the front yard. But the, uh, the project for today is I want to talk about making a garden bed. And so far, on this property, we have made a lot of beds, uh, 17 in fact, and over, th over the past six months, we went from a single in-ground garden in the backyard to 17 beds, and we're about to make the 18th, and I wanted to do a video talking about some of the mistakes I've made in the other 17 beds, how to make beds in a yard. It's really very easy. There's a few things to do to keep an eye on, to keep track of, to make a good bed. And I'm going to cover what I've learned so far, though I'm still learning. The nice thing about gardening is you're always growing. I used to tell people I still do, the day we stop learning is the day we die. And I feel very strongly that we always need to be striving to something better, something bigger. Sometimes it's not as dramatic as other times, but we're still striving. We have lizards crawling around everywhere. There's a lizard crawling up the tripod. Oh, there he goes. But uh, hopefully, I'm, I want to try to get some video of the lizards through the walkway back to the compost pile here later. Anyway, so what we're going to do is you can see this new color wall back here that I've placed. Um, there's going to be a crescent-shaped bed in front of it. And today we're going to lay cardboard. We might even first cut some grass. It's a little tall. And we have a lot of dollar weed in here. We're going to talk briefly about dollar weed. Um, we have uh, a problem of dollar weed all over this place. And uh, some of my beds don't have borders on them. And the weeds and the grass grow into the nice fluffy compost prolifically and so I'm going to have to do something eventually on the borders of these beds to keep the grass and the dollar weed and the other uh, type of weed I can't think of what it's called right now there's clover in here this is not a great lawn it's, it's kind of a rough grass uh, there are some sand burrs in here that we need to get rid of but we have mostly centipede grass, and uh, that stuff just proliferates, make these long runs into the bed if you don't take care of them. Over the past, uh, I don't know, since March, March, April, May, June, so four months, I've been trying to make a habit of doing something, uh, pulling something out every time I come out here. So that's my regular activity. I'm watching a lizard down here by the Jerusalem artichoke. We're going to get some video of them. They are, I just think they're neat. They are definitely a welcome uh, visitor resident in the garden. I was out planting the, uh, the walking onions a while back, and I'm sitting there underneath the orange tree, and a big bug was crawling up my neck, and I flopped it down. And unbeknownst to me, a lizard sitting on the fence pounced on it. I mean, faster than I could blink. Pounced on it and took off with that bug. And I, I mean, I liked the lizards before, but 
boy, when I saw that, I didn't realize how voracious a feeder they are. They love those beetles and bugs. So when I'm digging through them, I'll, if I find one, I'll throw one over to one. And it's, it's cool because a lot of times those lizards will just jump right up, get them and take off. So loving that, of course. Got some mint over here, the fig trees. Ah, the fig tree over here is dropping its figs, uh, not quite to full development. We'll have to look into that sometime. But anyway, so for now, I guess we need to just get started on this bed. You'll know, I don't know if you can see on the camera, there's sand up behind there. We're leveling the path behind there so that it's easier to walk. I do a lot of garden tours. I have a lot of friends come by that want to see, either see the garden or get something from the garden. And I just want to make a nice easy path that goes back there. And that's part of what that wall does. The, uh, the first thing though that I want to talk about is this dollar weed. And one of the big mistakes that I made in making some of these beds. And way over there where the bean trellis is, uh, the, it used to be peas and beans. The peas have, have uh, ended their lifespan. The weather's gotten hotter. It's June. And so the peas have died out, but they were prolific. But when I made that bed, one of the first mistakes I made was I did not put in enough cardboard on the bottom. And I've watched a lot of videos here on YouTube and they always say, put, it, put two layers of cardboard down. And I tell you what, I believe it. Uh, that bed over there that we're gonna go look at not only did I put one layer of cardboard down, I used small boxes. You don't want to use small boxes either. And you're going to see here in just a minute that uh, the dollar weed has found every single crevice between all the boxes and has grown up and proliferated that bed. In fact, they grow, grew so prolifically that they killed the beans up there. And you're going to see here in just a second what's going on. But let's, let's go ahead and show that first. So this is the bean trellis, a uh, rather sparse bean trellis. And there actually are bean plants up in here. Uh, some of these really look bad. I need to train them up. Oh, this one's actually long enough. Uh, what I do is I'll, I'll carefully unwrap these things and train them up the trellis so they'll grow better. If they can start getting trained, they'll start growing and producing. And I like this one here. Sorry, look, look this one here is really growing up there's actually beans on here I need to harvest some beans you might see some beans on here the ones down here at the end have done pretty good it's a different kind of of uh, a pole bean these are oh these are the Kentucky wonder I really like those these uh, ideal market beans they did okay uh, they really suffered from either the dollar weed or the uh, lack of Sun because remember there was another there was another trellis on the front here that was for the peas. Now that the peas are gone, there's no more sun, of course. And no more blockage of the sun, of course. You can see right now, they get pretty good sun. So anyway, the, probably not gonna do the ideal market again. We are definitely doing the Kentucky Wonder. There's another one in the back that we did, but I wanted to show you this dollar weed. And this is prolific stuff. It is just hard to believe what it does. carefully pull up here what happens is there is a runner and that's what I want to show you is these runners now if you don't live in the south you probably don't know what a dollar weed is uh, but okay here we go see looky here see that runner and it forks off and creates other runners but when you pull the run see there's a good one right there uh, when you pull these runners out carefully trying not to destroy my beans of course see there's a Bean root right there. I'm going to bury that back, but that runner came from the other side over there. There it is. And you got to keep these things pulled back. Uh, oh, there's that other, I forget what this other weed is called. I'm going to have to look it up before the end of the video. I just saw it this morning. But you've got to pull these runners out because these runners will literally tangle around the roots of the beans or whatever else you got. And uh, eat them up let's see there now these dollar weed not only do they make these long runners look at this this thing is just going on and on and on and on 
not only do they make these long runners, there's a rhizome underneath the ground, and they're these orangish um, tubers kind of things that they grow from, and they're pretty big. I got a pile of uh, wood chips once that was full of them. Got it all out, of course, but uh, yeah, it's this is a prolific plant. And once you've got it, it's very difficult to get rid of. I am working on some more organic ways to do that right now. Uh, one of the things that will be happening in this bed is at the end of the season, sometime in, uh, um, I don't know, December or January, we're gonna come back, dig everything out, filter out all the dollar weed root and redo this bed as an arch trellis. Uh, that's gonna be about um, 17 feet long, 17 or 18 feet long. But I spent a lot of time over here getting out. You can see there's, there's a clearing down these beans, but it's already grown back. I do this every few days, get, get these roots out of here, and they just surround the other roots. They choke them out. It's, it's rough. Oh, look at that. That's a long one right there. Yes, that's always a, a score when I do that. But these here, I just leave them sit out in the sun. They, they shrivel up and die. In fact, here's, here's some right here that shriveled up and died. There's a, I try to remember to pick them up, and sometimes I leave them. I do have a trash can over here that I empty on Friday, that our, our waste management people come by on Fridays and empty yard waste bins. So put this in there. Ooh, here's a big one. Oh, there's a new bean coming up. Look at there. Not quite reaching to the sky. Another root. This, tons of this, this stuff is just like spaghetti under here. Absolute spaghetti. Okay, so there we go. Cut grass. Um, I'll be the first to admit I am a lazy lawn cutter. I know my neighbor will attest to that. I tend to let things grow for about two weeks before I cut the grass. And the, I know this uh, centipede grass actually likes to be a little bit longer, which is why I let it grow longer. I do need to figure out how to get some of this uh, other stuff out of here, dollar weed and so forth. But anyway, so you can see I've placed a hose around here, which is going to be the outline of this bed. And I'm not totally sure what I'm going to plant here because I'm looking at this big crepe myrtle here, and it blocks a lot of sun, and then the sun goes up and comes over this American sycamore right over me. So this area doesn't get a ton of sun till the afternoon when it comes down through a little gap over there. So. I'm going to have to figure out something else for this area, and I'm not really sure what. I really wanted to plant the walking onions and pineapples here, but neither of those do very good. In fact, I'm noticing there's a space over here that does get some decent sun and may call for a slight change of plan. So there might be something there. I am, when, this is kind of a key bed, number 18, that uh, I've been waiting for to finish this front yard because what I ultimately want to end up with is a six inch grass path down this side. I'm just not six inch, six foot grass path, grass path, spit it out bow tie, six foot wide grass path down this side and up around this side with the bed over there. That bed where the Jerusalem artichokes is is going to match the side. I just want something like a, more like a path and I believe that grass should be walked on. I tell people that when they come over. You can walk on the grass all the time. Uh, the, the other thing is, 
behind this little colorful wall here that matches the beds. If you, if you watch some of our video tours, you know what the beds in the back look like. And uh, this is kind of a precursor to that. And what's going to happen up in there is that there's going to be ground cloth and wood mulch. I don't want any grass growing up in that area around the sycamore tree. And the biggest problem with it is if you ever tried to mow inside a curve, it doesn't work because this is straight. You end up with about an inch all the way around of grass staying there. So anyway, that's where we're going here and I'm going to have a bed out here. And that's what we're going to do in this video is build this bed. So the first thing we're going to do is put down a really good layer of cardboard and at least two layers. Now the interesting thing about the cardboard, that cardboard is going to stay there long enough to kill this grass and everything under it. What's going to happen next is the worms are going to be attracted to the decaying cardboard. They're going to eat the cardboard. Inside three months, two thick layers of cardboard are going to disappear. They're going to be gone. They're going to be part of nature. And it's very exciting to see. It's happened in all the other beds. The ones I did one layer in, the cardboard was gone inside two months gone. I mean, you dig down. In fact, if you saw the last video tour in May of this front, I dug down over there in that uh, bean and pea bed and there was nothing there. The only thing where the cardboard starts was dead grass. So this grass dies pretty fast. It's the dollar weed that doesn't. And so if you only put one layer, the dollar weed survives because they have these big old rhizomes underneath the ground that they're storing energy in and they're going to find the the openings and make their way up through and proliferate into your bed. And so with this bed, we are going to do it right with two layers of cardboard. And I'm even gonna try as best I can to stick it underneath and down in the ground around this wall, little short wall, so that we can uh, keep it from growing up, keep the grass from growing up there as well. So here we go, let's uh, get it started. Well, that was interesting. A little bit of a... Huh. So, this is the area where you find a lot of those lizards. Those, uh, I, I, get, I think they're skinks. No, they're not skinks. They're, uh, I'm not sure what kind they are, but uh, yeah, it's still down there. One of them. That looks like the female. I didn't know what they got up to over in this uh, area, but uh, yeah, now we know. Anyway, cardboard. Getting the cardboard for your uh, the bottom of your bed again you want nice heavy layer of cardboard and I cannot stress this enough so on to more serious business I want to show you this tool here this is my favorite tool for cleaning up cardboard and it's very important to clean up the cardboard all the tape that's on here all the staples they really should come out uh, you shouldn't put those in your ground uh, I know I've actually discovered I've missed a couple of places where the tape is but this is my favorite tool and it's a painting tool. If you go to the painting section of your hardware store, uh, this little sharp point right here is great for pulling staples and getting under the, the tape. It's great for just cleaning things up. It's real fast. And uh, see, like here's a staple, you can get under there. And I just pull out both those staples. Let me pull my trash can over here. I'll actually pull the trash can over here and make it easy to throw this stuff in there but staple oops oh that one just 
disappeared. Pulling staples, getting under the tape, I can get in there and dig in and pull off that piece of tape right there real easy. Uh, this is really what I find is the best tool for doing this. So I'm going to sit here and start pulling a whole bunch of bad stuff off this cardboard. And yeah, I know, bad stuff, yes. I don't want to put this stuff in the garden, it certainly is not going to feed it. So we just need to make sure this stuff is clean when you put it in. And so I'll admit, sometimes I don't get all the way every single piece. Uh, I do have a, this is actually the cover to my um, irrigation pump, so it's a nice convenient place for me to do it. It is directly in the hottest part of the yard all day. But, you know, we do, with, do what we can with what we can. So anyway, I'm gonna work on cardboard a while. Here we go. So I don't know what was secured in that last box, but obviously it was very valuable. A lot of tape on it. That's that's a challenge sometimes, and I've lost the tool. Um, well, wonderful. I think I took it inside. Anyway, so just a couple of words about where I get all my cardboard from. Um, I do drive around town a lot doing service calls. So I find myself uh, on roads where people have moved and uh, they have, um, you know, left their boxes out on the road and that's where this bundle came from. There are a few other places. Uh, one thing I will say though, like these small boxes, uh, there is no tape on this one. It is a small, oh, there's, there's a little bit. Um, I'm not crazy about the small boxes, as, as I've already mentioned. They, uh, they leave more gaps. I'm gonna be trying to do a triple layer on this bed, so maybe we'll have enough to cover the whole thing uh, if I save a couple of these better small boxes. And uh, so anyway, side of the road, uh, people just throwing away boxes, piles of boxes. And so once I found, uh, 80 or 90 boxes sitting on the side of the road one day and big ones all of them big ones and they had very conveniently stacked them and removed the tape and everything and when i got to them so that was a that was a good find unfortunately that was before we lived in this house so uh it didn't work out too well for me however uh, another place you can look for cardboard, if you have a recycle center where people would just drop off um, recycled stuff, they have a bin for corrugation, and yes, there's nothing wrong with dumpster diving, because trust me, this is a, it takes a lot of cardboard to do this right, and it's worth doing right. Trust me, it is worth doing right. Another place in uh, big box stores here in the U.S., we have uh, compactors where they compact all their cardboard. And I, in my Lowe's, I discovered that if you can go back to the entrance, that I don't, don't walk back there, but if you can see the com compactor, and you look back there, you see the compactor, you see that, uh, next to it sometimes they'll save large pieces of cardboard next to it for stuff like this 
and uh, some stores do it, some stores don't. Uh, you can ask them to. Sometimes they're nice enough to, to accommodate people. Uh, I know for around here, Lowe's is awesome about that. Or they have been awesome about that. I will admit they know me very well over there as a handyman. I do a lot of, uh, I buy a lot of stuff there and I'm in there just about every single day getting supplies for jobs. Uh, but you know, look around. Um, you can make friends at Walmart or whatever and if they have large pieces of cardboard, like this one here, uh, it looks like it's probably for a picture box. A box that holds pictures for moving. Um, and once I get it all de-taped here and broken, and I see I always break these at the seam. Nice seam right there. That makes a pretty good piece of cardboard. Uh, these labels, 99.9% .9 of the time they are made of, carb of paper. It doesn't matter. The ink on here doesn't matter. Uh, there is generally all inks are non-toxic anyway, so you don't have to worry about those. Here. Here's a piece that came from Lowe's, my last foray at Lowe's. Now occasionally these big labels, you can check them, but look here. It is just falling apart at the corners. This label is paper. Not gonna matter. I can see it's tearing apart. That's paper. Uh, Nice thing about these big pieces though, <laughs> there's no tape on it. It's all held together with uh, clips and things that they've already taken off. There's another one from Lowe's. But you know, think about what's happening here. We're recycling. This is the ultimate in recycling. We're turning old cardboard into nutri nutrients for soil. We're feeding the soil. We're giving the worms food and the worms are going to create uh, worm castings. Yes, worm poo. And um, that's a, okay, now here, this one here is a plastic label. It does not tear. It actually splits apart. It doesn't tear. That's, that's a plastic label. That's the kind of label you do need to keep an eye out for. I don't see that very often, except I think I may have just seen one on the other side as I flipped it over. I don't see those very often at all. But anyway, so there's three sources. Like, oh, yep, sure enough, another plastic label. So you can tell, I'm trying to get close. Ah. I know, I gotta keep my yard cleaner. Come up here close. And you can see this stuff does not tear. This is plastic. This does not tear like paper. So yeah, that's definitely a plastic label. And I'm like, again, I very seldom see those and about the only time I do see them, it's on these big boxes from Lowe's. They peel off real easy. So not too much trouble. Anyway, I'm gonna finish up my pile here. I only have a couple pieces left and uh, Go get me some lunch while my phone charges because my phone is about to die, which is what I'm recording this on. And uh, we'll start laying cardboard out in the bed. Ew, some of that in my mouth. Now you notice this is wet. I actually leave it sitting out here. Uh, I'm not really worried about it getting wet. I do leave it on the sunny side of the house, so it may get wet, but it also gets dry. So it kind of goes from wet to dry. I know I'm gonna have a big pile like I do right now. Sometimes it gets a little bit messy. But there you go. I'm going to finish this pile up and we will get to laying cardboard on the bed. Okay, so that bed over there I did with multiple layers. I have a little bit of incursion of dollar weed on this one edge, but it's pretty good. That bed up there is the one we showed earlier in this video. And that is where we have a lot of dollar weed growing up through. And here we can see the area for the new bed. And then the next step here is to start covering with cardboard. And you can see I have a pile of cardboard there. I've got my uh, tool in my back pocket to peel any more tape if I need to. I also have a little bit more cardboard. 
hopefully I have enough. But I uh, also have a box cutter here to shape the edge a little bit as well. So it's time to get to it. Here we go. And there's the cardboard. Some places there's uh, more than three layers. I think I've got two layers almost everywhere. Maybe right here. And now it's time to bring in compost. I think I have just enough compost to cover this. I have about a yard and a half, two yards. I don't think it's gonna be quite deep enough. I already know I'm gonna to have to go get more, but it's time to get the wheelbarrow and start loading in compost. Working on propagating out some uh, rosemary. Ooh, it smells so good. My current reserve of seaweed. Oh, wow, that's looking good. Ooh, nice. So that is the compost from the uh, equestrian center that I just uncovered and I'm going to use. Uh, again, it was free. I've gotten 36 yards of it so far. It's really dark, rich stuff. It's been sitting for anywhere between six and 20 years. So it is highly, highly composted. This is what we're putting in our bed. Now I gotta go find a wheelbarrow. This is the kind of tool you're gonna want to work compost. If you try it with a shovel, you're gonna be fighting the whole time trying to get the shovel in. This stuff just glides in, this thing glides in like butter. Butter.
Oh, lordy day. <sighs> yeah, 12 loads. So that's uh, 12 wheelbarrow loads of compost. Uh, comes up to under, just under uh, one and a quarter yards of the compost. Now I need to spread it out. It is 87, 88 degrees out here. Fortunately, there's a little bit of wispy cloud cover, so it's, the sun is a little diffused, which is nice. But the uh, only thing left now is to spread out oof, the compost nice and evenly. And it uh, looks like I'm gonna have a good thickness. I was, I was worried about not having enough, but uh, it looks like I'm gonna have enough. So people laugh when they see me come in with my white shirt, bow tie, and I think I've said this on a previous video, but uh, me and Mrs. Bowtie years ago saw a story about working out in the heat and what kind of clothes you're wearing. And uh, they made a very uh, good illustration that if you're wearing white, versus wearing black, and they actually had tested yellow, red, blue, several colors, but the whole scale, of course, was black and white. And this uh, dummy that they had dressed up was, um, had core temperature readings. And after working, after, well, not working, after being eight hours in the sun, the difference in core temperature on those dummies was 38 degrees blew me away 38 degrees difference from someone wearing a black shirt and being out in the sun versus someone wearing a white shirt and being out in the sun crazy blew my mind anyway one of the reasons why I wear white when I'm actually working I'm I've got my working around the garden and house pants on right now but when I'm doing handyman stuff and I'm outside I actually have white painters pants that I wear also and I stay pretty cool, but uh, you still have to take plenty of breaks, drink plenty of water, ice water, get you some good therm uh, Stanley thermoses that are gonna keep your water cold. And keep cool. Now all that's left though, spreading out that compost. Even, even if it were thin, it's okay because first several months, really all that compost is there for is to hold the, the, the cardboard down and for the, to do its job. I'll actually spread the compost just to the edge and just barely cover the edge of the cardboard. Um, grass will grow up through the edge of the bed. Eventually there will be edging to the bed to keep the grass and the pennywort or the also this, the uh, dollar weed also called dollar weed from growing into it as much it does help uh, the strawberry patch we have a brick uh, border around that and it actually hampers the growth of the dollar weed into the bed which is very cool but anyway sit here for a minute cool off all oh, the breeze feels good one nice thing about living here on the coast uh, is we get a breeze a lot of the time. Right now the breeze is coming off the water. The, uh, the Gulf of Mexico has that way a few blocks, about five blocks. And uh, I can feel the cool of the air coming off of, off that, uh, off of water out there. So it feels wonderful. Anyway, last step. Oh, and I gotta pick up the water hose too, but yeah, we're getting to the end.
so this here is called a mulch rake as far as I can best tell. Uh, pretty heavy duty rake. I, I move a lot of compost around like this and uh, the wood chips, which is the next step. I forgot about the wood chips. We gotta get some wood chips on top of this. But uh, wood chips, this is a heavy duty rake. Um, I actually got this at Ace Hardware here in Destin, uh, but uh, it's made by uh, True Temper. And it's really a nice, strong rake. It still has enough flexibility to help smooth things out, as you can see here. But uh, not, you know, not quite strong in a, as a uh, garden rake that we're used to, uh, which is what I used for most of the heavy smoothing, and then this thing kind of put the finish coat on. But uh, so now, here we go, wood chips. So there you have it, beginning to end, making of bed number 18 on our new property. From here, over the next couple months, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it for any new seeds that I might have brought in with the compost or the, or the um, wood chips. Just make sure that nothing new is growing. It's generally pretty easy to control if you stay on top of it. I might clean out five a week or so, but that's it though. So be sure to uh, subscribe. We're trying to get to our custom URL with a hundred subscribers. So be sure to subscribe to our channel and uh, like this video, share it with anyone else who might want to know how to do this and tell your friends. Appreciate you watching. If you're watching at this point, I really appreciate you. And uh, y'all have a great day. Have a blessed day. And for Bowtie Life, this is Bowtie Dave. So here we go with the count. Bed number one. Bed number two. Asparagus bed number three. Beans and peas bed number four. Riddled with dollar weed or pennywort. Pollinator bed number five. Sunflower and bee bed number six. And if I scan to the left, what was originally a sunflower bed and will become a loquat hedge bed, number seven. Number eight is another sunflower bed. That one sunflower lost its head. Number nine, the melon patch. Number 10, the blacktail mountain watermelon patch. Number 11, Crimson Sweet from Starts Watermelon Patch. And right over here, we have Crimson Sweet from Direxo Watermelon Patch. Where are we at? 12? Bed number 13, The Walking Onions. Bed number 14. Bed number 15. And of course, Bed number 16, the raised beds. Bed number 17, the grape arbor. Last but not least, bed number 18. A few more to go. Follow along.